This is geometry, lesson five, talking about arcs. We have a central angle, and a central angle is when the vertex is at the center of the circle. When you have an angle with the vertex at the center, the two sides of the angle are going to come up and touch the side of the circle at two points. If the angle is less than 180, then it's going to make an arc that we call a minor arc. It has a small part of the circumference. A semicircle is an arc with the endpoints at the endpoints of a diameter. So we have our circle in the center of our circle. Anywhere you want to put your diameter would go through. We have endpoints of that diameter. We can use any letters we want. Now to name this semicircle, we would need a third point. We can call that third point X, any letter you want to. But what this is going to tell us is which direction around the circle are we going to go. So if we have a semicircle, what we're going to end up doing is using three letters to name it. We're going to start with perhaps A, then we go through the X to get to the B. So that's going to be arc. So we put this curve above the three letters. This is called the arc AXB. Whereas this one up here would be called arc AB. This arc AXB, we'd be looking here at this portion of The circumference. So a semicircle is half of our circle. And we name it using three letters. If it's less than half, we use only two letters to name the arc. A major arc are the points on the circle not on a minor arc. Let me start over again. The points on a circle not on the minor arc, form a major arc with the points AB. That was confusing. If not counting our minor arc, the other direction would be a major arc. So let's come through here and draw in our big circle. We have our center point. Again, we're going to make an angle that looks like a minor arc, but if we want to talk about the other direction, then we need to highlight a point out on that side, and we would call this AXB, arc AXB is our major arc. We go out that direction. So a major arc is going to be more than 180 degrees. A semicircle is going to be 180 degrees. And a minor arc is going to be less than 180 degrees. So they're both written the same. Right. Okay, the measure of the entire circle. What do you think the entire circle all the way around is going to be? 360 degrees. So that means all of these angles in here are going to add up to 360. And by the way, also, all these arcs will have an angle measure of 360 degrees. Though they will be the same. The measure of a minor arc is the measure of its
central angle. And a minor arc is always less than 180 degrees. So what they're talking about with the central angle is if we have 135 degrees for our central angle, then the minor arc is also going to be that same angle value. It's not the length of it. We call that something else, arc length. This is the measure of the arc, and the measure of the arc is in a degree value. So whatever the central angle is, is going to match the intercepted arc. So how are we going to figure out the measure of AD? Oh, 180 minus... Nice job. 180 is the whole straight line. We have a diameter. So if one side's 135, we know that the other side has to be 45. Because together they have to make up 180. An arc is the same measure as its central angle. So the measure of arc AD is going to be 45 degrees. The measure of a major arc is the difference between 360 and the measure of the related minor arc. So what that's referring to is the major arc. If we wanted to go all the way around from A, B, back to D, we could call it 360 degrees, not counting the 45. So it's 360 degrees, back up 45 degrees. 360 minus 45 would tell us that major arc that did not include this related minor arc. That's what they're referring to. A major arc is always going to be more than what? 180. More than 180 degrees. So a major arc is relatively big. So in this case, for the measurement of ABD, arc ABD, we could add 180 plus 135. Some people would prefer to do it that way, and that would totally work. Some people might be able to look at it and notice, well, it's the whole circle, but I'm coming back. I don't want this last little bit. Well, that's the 45. So that's where the 360 minus the 45 comes from. So we get 315. What do we know about a central angle? I said central angle. What do we know about a semicircle? Uh, it's going, the measure is 180. 180. So here we have the three letters, so we know it's going to be 180 or more. ADB, arc ADB is half the circle because we have our diameter. So that's going to be 180 degrees. All right, now you can pause the video, work through the next three questions, determining if it's a minor arc, a major arc, or a semicircle. The bold portion of our circumference is which type of arc? So here we have 
it's highlighted between A and B. So we could say that arc AB is a minor arc. Whereas with letter B, we're going from A through the D all the way over to the B. So we have three letters to name this arc. And this one is definitely a major arc. So we have P, S, Q, and that's taking up half of our circle. So P, S, Q is a semi-circle. Now we'll talk about some of the measurements. So a similar picture that we had earlier. We have 135 degrees. It might be to your benefit to figure out all the measurements before you start to answer the questions. Then you can go right through the list of the questions. For example, if this is 135, we have a diameter at AB. So here they're telling us specifically this is a diameter, which 100 and 80 minus our 135 gives us 45. We have 45 degrees, which tells us our minor arc is also going to be 45 degrees. If our central angle is 135, we know our arc is going to be 135. And since this is a semicircle, this is going to be 180 degrees. So now we can come down and answer the questions. Tell whether the arc is a minor arc, a major arc, or semicircle, and also give its measurement. So arc. DB, because it has two letters, I don't even need to look at the picture. It has two letters for this arc. I know it is a minor arc. And the measure of DB, arc DB, from D to B is going to be the same as the central angle. So that's 135 degrees. For our second one, DAB, now notice how DAB, that's telling us to go around the long way around. So there's two different ways we can calculate this. We know that it's more than 180, so this is going to be a major arc. Two different ways we can calculate it. We can call it 360, take away your 135, but I assume most of you would say that it is the 180 plus the 45. So the measure of arc DAB is 45 plus 180, which is going to be... 225. Here we have arc ADB, and that goes from the end point of the diameter to the end point of the diameter. So this is a semicircle. So the measure, let me not get it too close to that line. The measure of ADB is going to be 180.
two arcs of the same circle are adjacent if they do not overlap because we don't want to count a portion of the arc or circumference twice, so they can't overlap. And they share the same endpoint. So what that's going to look like, here we have DB. And we have, I'm sorry, DB. D to B would be on this side, and A to D would be on this side. Those two arcs are considered adjacent because they do not overlap. They're completely separate arcs, and they share the same endpoint. So arc AD and DB are examples of adjacent arcs. So now we can add these arcs together. This is called the arc addition postulate. We have talked about segment addition postulate, angle addition postulate, even area addition postulates before. Now we're talking about arc addition postulates. We're just adding two arcs together. The measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of the two arcs. So in this situation down here, if we take a look at ABC, we're going to take the smaller arc plus the smaller arc and add those two together. So we have the measure of AB plus the measure of BC. We're going to add our two arcs together. So we'll finish off with a couple examples like that. This first one's a little tricky. Here we have ages of people. They're on the outside. We're going to just be using the angle values on the inside. So use the angle values on the inside, the central angles, to answer your arc measurements. Pause the video. Give those a try. Come back. And we'll walk you through it. All right, let's take a look at RU. From R to U, we're going to be adding the 60 and the 80 together to get 140 degrees. RVT, we have V, which down here at the bottom. RV all the way up to T. So different ways that we could do that. We could add each one of those together or we could subtract what we don't want. So if we wanted to use the 360 and not count the portion that we weren't using, we could go that route. RT, that's the portion of 100 plus the 30 to give us 130 degrees. And U, S, that's all the way around here, back to T, is everything but the 90. So 360 minus the 90 gives us 270. And our last example, if we can still fit this in, will be we have two diameters. You can put your first diameter anywhere you want, AC, and then BD, let's take a look. ACD, ACD is going to be 300 and 
16 all the way around the outside. So the leftover part is going to be 360 minus our 316, which is 44 degrees, which means our central angle is going to have the same measurement, 44. Vertical angles are going to have the same measurement, so BC is going to have the same measurement. Then we have BCA, which is 180 plus 44. Which is 224. And then DCB, which is a semicircle of 180. So that was pretty quick, but we fit it in.